We are still in NYC today. I've got my girl, S.E. Cup, coming on the podcast, but with the traffic, the fires, everything in New York is just insane right now. So running a little late, thought I'd catch up with my hubby since we didn't get his thoughts on part three of the reunion and the Rachel of it all. Did they get your thoughts on part three? Because we just watched it last night. I know. Well, we're going to get into that with S.E. when she gets here. I want to hear a little bit about what you thought. Oh, I mean, I, uh, I, I, I felt it's so crazy that these guys in there, however they thought the scenario out, right? I'm new to this group. I've said this multiple times. But how do they think that this was okay at any point in time to just apparently do this? Just normal people do this. Then know that we have a TV crew following us around for our, for a whole, a whole summer. Yeah. It's wild. It just baffles me. And now it gets to a point where like, okay, everyone, obviously everyone loves to have an opinion on things too. But after watching episode three, it's wild. The fact that they, you know, it's the first time we see Raquel get upset, emotional. Yeah. Okay. And finally, it, finally, and then and then it's the first time she tries to tell the truth, which was then also limited by we would not like to disclose certain things. It was only the truth that they wanted to express. Mm-hmm. The fans in the audience, the, the fans want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help me God, <laughs> me God. Okay, <laughs> and I feel like that's their only way out of this rut that they've put themselves in mm-hmm. because I I do see. Well, we're hearing rumors that they're not together now. Yeah, I have no idea, honestly. So then you blew your world up for what? Exactly for what? And I, I, I lo- I, we loved these guys. They were, they, you, you, like, it's this whole, this whole situation that they put themselves into now. The only way out for redemption, and this is just me climbing to the end of it, is like tell the truth, the whole truth. I just said it. Yeah. But you still couldn't even do that. And what made her upset wasn't the friendships that she lost. It wasn't anything else. It was the fact that she had to lie, which is the only th- time I've seen her in all three episodes show any emotion. Yeah. It was because she didn't like being deceitful or l- having to physically lie. Mm-hmm. She liked being deceitful because when she was meant to be in court, where was she? In Tom Sandoval's bed. Okay. So you, she knew what was going on, but when she had to pay the piper or when that came due... That was what hurt her more than your guys' friendships, more than anybody else's friendships. There was the only time I saw her get upset. I mean, that was because she had to lie. That's what made her upset, which, which I mean, look, I don't want to beat down on a dead horse or beat down on somebody that's down, but they just do it to themselves. Yeah. And so how do you feel about it? <sighs> I mean, it was a lot, you know, just... <laughs> Watching all of that, hearing her truths, but it's not even the complete truth. It just, yeah. I what, how, can you? <laughs> I got a question. I know everybody's asking you. Uh, has asked us like, the what next question is always going to come up, and it's going to be the hottest topic of this summer, right? Mm-hmm. What do you see for your friendships with everybody in the group? How do you see summer? How, what does your summer look like? I was like, summer? Well, our daughter looks like you. It looks like us. Like, out, like, but no, I honestly, I do not know. I have no clue where we go from here. I don't know who comes back from here. I honestly don't know. So uh, that's just going to be a time we'll tell, wait and see sort of thing. <sighs> Her tell all at the Man. end wasn't even a tell all. It was a tell it partial was just, truth. Exactly. It was a little bit, but. Oh, but the people wanted to know, know the fucking truth. And you sit there and you cry and you say, you're going to tell the truth. Well, and then you leave parts out. And then that was also only her side. It wasn't Tom Sandoval's. Well, that's not going to, we're not going to get that. I know. Anyway. And if we did, that's all the world wanted. But instead, yeah. he went on Howie Mandel and just decided to chat to somebody that didn't even know who he or her or anybody was. Yeah, he said, who is Sheena? 
dick. <laughs> what a dick. Miss Michaela Jane said, I would love to hear Brock address those stupid rumors that he and Rochelle hooked up. Whoa. Uh, fun fact, never happened. And honestly, it was really upsetting because we had friends of ours reach out to us, mm-hmm. to Sheena, to check in. And I appreciate the friend check-in. I do. And I understand you know, the the world and the lay of the landscape that we're in. But the truth is there was no truth to it. The reason why I was so protective and why Sheena and I both fought for Sheena, for Sheena, but we, why we both fought for Raquel, Rachel, is because we we saw somebody that was innocent, like the whole everybody else. We mm-hmm. saw this, somebody that got talked over by, by James, somebody that was just kind of in her shell. And we all saw that. So we wanted to support her and however we... Okay, you moved out of James' house. Let me help you move out. I was yeah. the first one over there moving her you out. You were the only person. It was you and her dad. Exactly. No so one else. we moved her out of the house. We gave her a place to live. And so the fire emoji, which was like hot topic. That's literally the next question from AU Megs underscore. Why did Brock put heart eye emojis, which I think they meant fire emojis, under Raquel's post and did it bother you? And it just to answer that part, it did not bother me. I literally just like two weeks ago commented fire emojis on one of James's posts. And, and, like, and wh- I feel like when you talk to somebody through emojis, like you're actually not having a real conversation with that person. Yeah. It t- it's effortless. It's a tap, 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 boom. Yeah. You know, or a double And light. it was a good photo. So I'm She like, looked great in the photo. She looked hot and it had nothing to do with me wanting to hit on her. Okay. It was me trying to fluff her feathers, mm-hmm. which is what I do as a person. I prefer to lift people up than tear them down. Yeah. So I always saw her as somebody that needed that support. I see, and I, and I did, and I gave that to her up to the point where we ended up having this, this coming out. And then how she, ha- even how she handled the following days and the weeks and then how it affected our life, how it affected you, how it affected our child. Mm-hmm. That was it for me. I, I'm, I'm all forgiven part. because I, I need, I, everyone deserves their second chance. But, but the, that part and all of it and how it affected you and Summer, that was it for me. And that means like, at that point, I didn't care. You mm-hmm. can't, you shun. But yeah, rumors are false. It, the fact that they came around, there is a big problem with social media. There is a big, big problem. Yeah, they can say anything, and then some people are going to believe it. That's the problem. That's, and that's it. And and you guys never had this ten years ago. This wasn't the case with social media and the impact that you guys it was have. Not as much. And I much, think this no was way. just like a vortex of everything, a combination of your show, your audience, social media, which took it to another level mm-hmm. and allowed for a lot of things to be said that aren't true. And that's and that, that's hurtful for the person that gets said to them. Oh, well, this is true. This is, and then the person has to then defend themselves. So for that, I just shut up. I yeah. shut up. I spoke about it here, and because to be honest, smart. I do say it's smart. Because <laughs> when I do interviews, when I get on, when I, when I let the mouth go, I'm not trained. We know. <laughs> <laughs> We're. I aware. just get on there and just speak how I feel, and sometimes I'm wrong. Yeah. And saying things I'm wrong too. Wow. He's admitting here on shenanigans that sometimes he's wrong. Guys, like a 99% chance I'm wrong, but I'm going to try. <laughs> and then if I, I just, yeah, I'll try. Yeah. But also the way you responded to that, it's like if you think back to several episodes ago when Jeremiah asked Tom if anything was ever physical between them, he's like, no, like never. The, the, and it's just like kept going. It's like you just say, no. That never happened. Yeah. That's a real response. So it was just so obvious even then. Had we not known, there would have been so many moments this season that we've seen now over 18 episodes that you would have been like, that's off. There's something, no, that's not right. The way he said that, you know? So it's like, I feel like it all was coming out regardless. It Mm -hmm. just, the way it did... I said this before, I'll say it again. I think that as hard as it was for Ariana in that moment, that's how it needed to come out because look at her now, you know? She would have never left. She would have stayed. She loved him. She was his number one supporter and fan. Yeah. And she would have stayed. I would, that, when we went to the, uh, for your considerate awards. uh, The Emmy event, yeah. that, That was that was one one of the topics that everyone was there was bringing up and it was like it was the underdog it was the it was the kind person the good person because i to be on your show 
I know your heart and I know you get walked over because you are forgiving. You just want to make everyone okay. And that's not okay in this world where you need to have an opinion and you need to stand your ground. Yeah. And so I think this was a win for the fans and the good people out there. Mm -hmm. The good ones finally rallied together and they stuck it to the dicks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how you're going to make that a meme, but there we go. But they, they came together and I think that was really cool to see in today's culture the rallying of the troops behind one person, Ariana, they put her up there and they said, we've got you. Yeah. And that was, I think, I, I, that's like the highlight of, of all of that. Mm -hmm. And it gave her the confidence to remind us. It, obviously, heartbreaking, everything's in there. But with that much love and support, I know for a fact it changed how her, she handled the situation, how she walked through that. Yeah. Rose from the ashes like a bloody phoenix. Yeah. You Totally. So pumped. <laughs> and everyone that supported her and everyone that got on that bandwagon, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, guys. No, absolutely. Ariana is thriving. I couldn't be happier for her, but I think it all did need to happen the way that it did, unfortunately. I, mean, I would prefer it not to have happened for seven months. Well, of course, I would have preferred for it not to happen at all, but I'm saying that happened meaning how it came out. I think it needed to happen that way. Yeah. In order for this to be the outcome for Ariana. They fucked on out. They they were getting after it at our wedding. Our our whole wedding, the whole summer. They it, they never stopped. Like now, I I kind of want to now because we we watched it through. And we're like, oh okay, they made out. Let's see. Mm -hmm. That was what made this season so iconic. I think for the fans to watch was yeah. the double meaning on everything because they get through the whole summer. Like oh, we got away with it. We did it. Yeah, no one knew. Right. You no one knew. The parents of Tom Tom, you're slinging a song, your phone drops out of your pocket. Bang. Bloody hell. Bloody hell. <laughs> <laughs> Crikey, mate. That is hectic. Oh, so as you mentioned, we were just at the FYC Emmy event. You know, fingers crossed we get nominated and double fingers crossed we actually win. So when we were at this Emmy event, we got there. We were the surprise guests who showed up to the after party on this rooftop. But I was so bummed that we missed the Q&A. So Essie Cup, who is going to be here soon, she's a political commentator, Bravo super fan. I've done Watch What Happens she's Live with her. She's so awesome. Kristen's done Watch What Happens Live with her a couple times. She's done Kristen's podcast. She's fantastic. She hosted... The Q&A with Alex Baskin and Lisa Vanderpump for the Emmy consideration. Oh, so and we can ask her all the goss. Yeah, I was I was so bummed that we didn't get to be there for that part, but they didn't want anyone to see us because we were the surprise guests for the after party. But that's how we just recently reconnected, and I was like, yo, we got to get into some shenanigans. So SE is about to be here. We're going to take a quick little break, and we'll be right back. Woohoo! Hi! Hi! Summer, can you say it's Factor Fridays? No. Okay. Well, I'm gonna show you guys my new meals for the week. Ooh, we've got some good ones. All right, Summer, let's show the people what we've got. We've got shredded chicken taco bowl, <laughs> herb crusted chicken. These meals are always fresh, never frozen, ready in just two minutes. You just chuck it in the microwave, put a few holes, ready to go. Sun-dried tomato chicken, Yay. one of my favorites. Yeah, we've got turkey, chili, and zucchini. Creamy Parmesan chicken. Summer, can you say, Factor Fridays? Factor Fridays. Woo! Okay, y'all. Visible Wireless. Now, let me tell you about them. They believe in bringing people together, and not just through its simple, accessible, all-digital wireless service, but also through the power of connections and fostering community. So. That's why this Pride Month, Visible is launching the hilarious 70s theme game show, No Straight Answers. This is going to be bringing Gen Z contestants and LGBTQ plus icons together to support SAGE, S-A-G-E. That is a nonprofit advocating for LGBTQ plus elders. This is a spirited game that uplifts the LGBTQ plus history fosters intergenerational connection, and celebrates those who paved the way for pride to become what it is today. Because look at how far we have come. Go visit visible.com slash 
SAGE, that's S-A-G-E, to learn more about the campaign and watch No Straight Answers on Visible's Instagram and TikTok. Okay, so for my longtime shenanigans listeners here, I'm going to take you back and I'm going to take you back to Care Of, which is a subscription service that ships high quality, personalized vitamins, supplements, and powders conveniently to your door every month. So let me tell you about this. You go online, you take a fun little quiz. I mean, honestly, I love doing quizzes. It takes me back to just when I was younger, whether it was like a Cosmo magazine. So it's basically a short in-depth quiz about your lifestyle and health goals for a personalized doctor-backed recommendation. Care of makes taking your vitamins on the go this summer so convenient with these individual daily packs that are perfect for travel. It has your name on them. It has cute little quotes. I mean, they're so easy to just toss in your purse. So I just want to thank Care of as being one of my sponsors and partners for today's episode. So right now for my shenanigans listeners, you can get 50% off your first care of order. Just go to takecareof.com and enter code Brock50. And we're back with my girl S E. How you doing? I'm good. Busy day. Yeah. News day. I know. Uh-huh. I know. We're gonna get into all of that. But first, I need to know what your thoughts were on the Vanderpump Wait, Rules did you see it? season. 10 yeah. finale ah! reunion everything now that it is all out there the world has seen it what do you think it's wild <laughs> i mean this is a masterpiece of television this season and i mean i hate it because it involves real people and i know that you know there's real emotions here but like like they say in hollywood you can't script it yeah you couldn't script this. No. And I've watched, you know, as long as it's been on, so I'm invested in all of you, mm-hmm. that these two people mm-hmm. would do what they did on camera. On camera. We, we just on said that. camera. We said that. It I know. It is wild. And it's not like they're new in this environment. Like, you know what I mean? They've been yes. in it. They're yes. in it. They know... If you know anything, you know how this is going to play yes. out. The truth. You know you're going to be a villain. Yeah. And it was so raw and real. Like your emotions were so real in, yeah. your, in the trailer. And then also, you know, on, on the set at the reunion, everyone is so real and raw, except Rachel, mm-hmm. who is a robot. I don't understand what's going on in there. Is she heavily, like heavily medicated? Is there just no, no connection between mind, body, heart? I don't get it. Right. It was very um, chilling. So then how did you that. feel watching her finally have emotion in the very last second? In the seconds? very end. Very end. Listen, I'm all for accountability and her coming out and telling the whole truth. Was it the whole truth though? Well, well, we'll never know <laughs> <laughs> with these lying liar faces. But, right. but listen, clearing that up and, and contradicting Tom, mm-hmm. you know, I think that was important, important to do, um, important for us to see. And man, does he just look even worse, worse than you thought he could look after that. I know. After that, because not only, you know, he's screaming accountability and I'm taking accountability. And while he's doing that, he's lying still about it. I know. And telling her to lie. And so they were, and they were lying because they, their perception was it was more hurtful for for yep. both of their characters or, or to us to say, well, this has been continuously happening, right? They were supposedly trying to protect what feelings Ariana had left that weren't already crushed. They were like, well, maybe if we act like it was just once and then not for a while, that'll be easier for Ariana to accept and... You so know, in other words, get maybe over? if I don't we know. keep lying to Ariana. Correct. This will be keep okay. Lying, yes. It'll be better. Yeah, let's not talk about how bad it was. The fact that we had sex in her house when her grandma died and she was at the funeral. Let's not talk about how the whole time while Ariana was being a good <laughs> bridesmaid, we were having sex in Mexico. Let's not talk about it. It was just like, are you kidding me? <laughs> are you kidding me? And poor Jenny Ting was at the wedding by herself, one of Rachel's previous best friends. Okay. And she said that she was just seeing 
stuff that was off between Rachel and Sandoval. And she was like, I was, it felt like third wheeling with them. She's like, but I know they're best friends. She goes, it was just so weird. I was in Ariana's room with them. And the way Rachel was just prancing around as if like, this was her room. She goes, I just got really weird vibes, but I'm like, well, that's just Rachel being Rachel and, you know, just making herself comfortable and inserting herself when she shouldn't. Meanwhile, Ariana is with me, the bride, being a good bridesmaid. Yeah. What is bad bridesmaid doing? Banging the good bridesmaid's boyfriend. Insane. What? It's insane. And I think, I mean, if you if you don't watch the show, you'd be like, well, I don't get it. Like, how could they do this yeah. without anyone knowing? But you watch the show, you know how y'all are mm-hmm. together. You all hang out together. It's not weird that two would go off and Correct. go dancing at right. the Abbey or whatever. I didn't think I, it was weird at all. I get that completely. However, watching back, everything was there for yeah. you to see. Yeah, everything. Which made, which is, was goes back to exactly what you said. Why this season was such an iconic season? Yeah, because it was a double entendre throughout the whole season. The whole, the whole exactly season right. was a double entendre. There was the a show, season. and then we realized, oh, look for the a different. Subtext there was exactly of everything else that was going on. No. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. And that's why when we were in LA, we were doing like an Emmys. Um, right. I was just talking about that before yeah, you got for here. Consideration, like. That's the story, how production captured all of this and then picked up really quickly to get y'all's reaction in the immediate aftermath. Yes. Uh, it's just wild. Remarkable. Speaking of that immediate aftermath, the Happy Hamill wants to know, what do you think of how I handled Punchgate and Rachel's abuse of the court system? That was such a um, real moment, too. Because you're a very strong girl and we think, you know, we see you and you're like, I got this. I got this. I got my lawyers. Yeah. But to see you really break down and talk about how it was affecting your family and your daughter. I mean, I got teary eyed Mm -hmm. because I'm a mom too. You don't fuck with my kids, right? Or my family. Yeah. Um, So, and I was actually, it was refreshing to see Rachel say, I should not have done that. Mm -hmm. No, no shit. You shouldn't have. Right. Just make, keep making things worse. Yeah. Um, But I thought you handled it like a pro and even better, like a mom. Thank you. Yeah. That was the hardest part. It was like, there's the betrayal, but then when you put that on top of it, like that was the hardest part for me. Yeah. Just Yeah, I bet. I can't imagine what you've gone through. There's the betrayal of Tom. Yeah. To you personally. The betrayal of Tom to your best friend, Ariana. You having defended Rachel for so long. Yeah. Who then slaps you with a restraining order. I know. How can you write Are you this? in therapy? Are you in therapy? <laughs> I at noon today I had therapy. I think we're all in therapy. I've been now. in weekly <laughs> therapy. I was going every other week. I've yes. upped that to weekly. My therapist is, you know, the nerve. She's going on vacation for two no! weeks. <laughs> what is she doing? And Bad timing. So um <laughs> You so, can call me. You for those me. two weeks in June that she is gone, I've decided I'm going to see a psychiatrist Good. because my OCD has just gotten, it's like Triggered. debilitating at this point. It's so it. bad. And I'm like, you know what? I think let's try some meds temporarily, yeah. six months, a year, see what it does. But it's just like, it's been a lot. I was there too. I had yeah. a total nervous breakdown about two years ago and I got on medication and therapy. Yeah. Um, because it is exhausting yeah. to live with this anxiety. Yeah. C- catastrophizing, terrible thoughts, mm-hmm. feeling out of control, bad news all around. Yeah. People you thought you knew disappointing and betraying you. I've been through mm. that. I'm still going through it. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. It'll get better. But you got to work I know. On it. It's and just, it's gotten so much worse lately, too. I felt like when the scandal all broke and when all of that was going on, and as stressful as the restraining order and all of that stuff was, my OCD took a back seat. Yes. And then after, like, because you needed to survive. Exactly. Right. And then right. after court and everything, it was like, okay. I can breathe. I'm not getting slapped with an assault charge. I'm not going to jail. I don't have a permanent restraining order. Like we can breathe, but it still took like a week to be like, 
are they going to change their mind? Is something else still yeah. going to come up? Like right. I was very still on edge. I went to dinner with my lawyer and I was like, it's not over. I don't, I, I feel like something's still going to happen. He's like, you're fine. You're fine. So then fast forward a couple more weeks, everything really does settle down. We like go to Coachella and we just kind of get back yeah. to which Coachella. Now that's like triggering on another level. Uh, right, right. But it was like life was starting to just kind of go back to yeah. normal. Yeah. It's my daughter's birthday and all of that. But then right when that all started to go back to normal, my OCD is like, yes. hey, Remember me? we're still here. Right. That's what happens. Yeah. You can turn it off to survive. Yeah. And then right when you're feeling okay, yeah, it'll come back and say, no, 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 you put me on a shelf. Yeah. You didn't get rid of me. Yeah. You put me on a shelf. Well, I'm yeah. Back. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So. Well, you're lucky you have such a good partner. I do. But family. it's also, it's hard because he gets so frustrated with me when I'm like, I don't like feeling this way. And yeah. it's just like, get over it. But I'm like, I, I can't. No, and like, that's not a thing. Even just getting here, the subway, I'm like, we're going to be late. We're not going to have time. And he's like, calm down. It, I'm like, no, no, no. I don't, yeah, I don't lead with get over it. I lead no, with take a breath <laughs> yeah, that's good. and that's let's good break down like what is causing you to feel like this and let's just put I'm it like, on a piece know, of paper. I don't know. I'm just, I'm overwhelmed. And when I ask her to do that, even that overwhelms her. Right. Then I go, well, I can't help you. If you can't no, do this, bro, what else can I do? But you can't help her. No. This isn't a fixable exactly. thing. Exactly. And so just be there. Like Taking that. a breath is great. Yeah. But also you're not going to fix it. There's no mm. fixing. It just, no. It's going to take some time. Yeah. No, yeah, I'm I, but I was the same way in the car. My husband's in the corner. I was the same way. We're going to be like, what am I going to do? Yeah. Da, 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 da. I need a distraction. I call my mom. I'm like, I just need a distraction. Yeah. I'm the same way. <sighs> Good to know I'm not alone, you but I'm, so I'm sorry alone. that you go through that as well because it's just like uh, certain days, it's just like now at the point where it's debilitating and I'm Completely. like, I can't do this anymore. I'm I, feel, I feel the same way. In covering the news and awful news all the time for yeah. my job. Yeah, I do um, want to ask you about that yeah. as well because oh, you know- What's going on? What? We've been talking about <laughs> scandal yeah. in my workplace, but I know you have um, some drama going on in yours as well. There's scandal. So, in my workplace as well. Were you shocked this morning when you saw the news about your boss, uh, CNN CEO Chris Licht, mm -hmm. had been let go? Mm -hmm. Like, what was your reaction? I wasn't shocked. I mean, it's been a very bad year. Did you see it coming? I hoped it was coming. Yeah. I, like, no, this isn't personal against Chris, but we've had a really bad year, a tough mm -hmm. year at CNN with very bad ratings low morale, I think some real bad programming decisions that were like double and triple down on, and a lack of communication. And so for us on the talent side or even on the production side, it's been a very disorienting time with almost no leadership telling us what's gonna happen and people getting cut every five seconds and you feel like I could be next. And mm -hmm. wow. um, very disorienting year. And so I was hoping for a change, whether that was Chris taking a different role or new leadership coming in, but it's not like um, a, a happy thing either because right. we feel destroyed mm -hmm. and we are still left picking up the pieces. Yeah. He's gone. I don't know what's next. I don't know how to fix all the damage that's been done. Right. So it's a really tough demoralizing time for all of us. None yeah. of us feel good today. What has been like the general tone? Like, do you guys have like work group chats? Yeah. Or yeah. It's not good. I mean, some of this has been, um, I mean, it's been a, exhausting. Yeah, it's, lo it's a long yeah. time in the making too. Yes. In, and I feel like the problem with that you guys are facing is it's trust. And once you, and, totally. and, and, and once, then how can you tell a story sometimes when you lose that trust? Mm -hmm. That's exactly right. Yeah. And especially as journalists, mm -hmm. we need to feel empowered, independent. Yeah. Not like our boss is breathing down our necks. That's yeah. not his job actually. Right. And so some of the decisions that he made were very, um, they felt like they were handicapping us. Mm -hmm. And we looked bad and we were embarrassed, but we didn't make these decisions. You know, the Trump town hall, I didn't make that call, but I have to live with it. I'm smeared by that decision. And yeah. it was just, it was a tough place to be. I'm, yeah. I'm hoping for brighter days. We need a strong press. Right. We, I want all my colleagues at all the networks to be at their best. Yeah. Perfect. And we've not been at our best. No, totally. So, so. Who do you think is the right person to helm CNN? The the right person to helm CNN left was the last person that helmed CNN, mm. Jeff Zucker. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm not alone when I say I hope he comes back. Yeah. Jeff, come back. Come back, Jeff. <laughs> Jeff, come back. Rock wants you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I got a couple questions regarding all of this, okay. too. Do you think this is a direct result of that 
interesting feature from The Atlantic. Yeah, that was... I, I hope you didn't read it because it was 15,000 words. No, that's too much for me. I, uh, well, it's too much for anybody. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think um, anyone really I barely read, read the LA Times Randall every- scandal and that was because I needed to read every word of that. Yes! That's the longest thing I've read in a yeah. really long time. Listen, 15,000 words is too much access. Yeah. You have given someone too much access yeah. to you and our organization. So that was a very bad look. Mm-hmm. But that was the last of many bad mm-hmm. decisions. And listen, again, not personal. Chris, I think, was great at running the Colbert show. Um, but it's a different thing to run a news network. Yeah. It's a different thing. Yeah. It's also a different climate in the world we live in too. Yes. Because how we now consume content and consume media, it's this, she knows, like how many people will tune in to CNN news? What, what is Fewer that? Fewer than are listening to this podcast right now. Exactly. I bet. And uh, for sure. And and because you guys get over a million one downloads, you know, right. a oh, month. We do not do any of five million, you know, and, and you're <laughs> looking at a network that's. I know. And so the output from social media and the impact it has now on, on the media yeah. as a journalist, I'm, that's actually a fun question for me. Like what, what does it, because everyone's going independent to try and build that because you got to build yeah. your cred back up. Yes. Because mm-hmm. it's got tarnished by the people above you that took it away from you. Yes. And wow. is this yes. why VPR was on the main page of CNN? They're like, we need the clicks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you blame them? No. Do you blame them? I mean, Time We're CNN. Like, New, York We're good. Post, New York Times. CNN. Frame, it's like, a big show. what is this? Well, I mean, this just took hold of a nation. Yeah, this story. it really did. Um, but yeah, listen, every media outlet right now, especially cable news, is trying to figure out cord cutting mm-hmm. and streaming and mm-hmm. how to be relevant at a time when people don't watch the news, don't watch. I know. They're on their phones, right? They're listening yes. to your podcast. So that's not just us. We're all trying to figure that part out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, who we are um, as a brand. What is the CNN brand anymore? I'm not really sure people know. We used to be on top of all the breaking news. Right. Something's happening. You tune in to CNN to see what's happening in real time. Um, then we became real obsessed with politics, mm-hmm. right? Uh, especially in the Trump era, real hyper focused yeah. on politics. And I remember lots of stories falling away because we were so hyper focused on politics. Right. Well, who are we now? I'm not sure we know, and that's that's a problem. That's mm-hmm. a problem for attracting viewers. Yeah. And I want I want viewers. I want of fans. Course. The way Bravo gets such loyal fans, and I have a friend in research at Bravo, you know, Dave, and he would always tell me. There's a cross section, a very important cross section mm-hmm. of CNN viewers and Bravo viewers. It's a, a very similar person that yeah. is watching both. They're affluent, they're well educated. Right. Um, and I that always stuck with me because I live in both worlds, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously yeah. I live full time at CNN, but I'm a Bravo holic and yeah. um, I have a PhD in Bravo. <laughs> <laughs> Credited. Put that in um, there. So, so like I, I, I love that, and I want, I want all those viewers, mm-hmm. and we've got to find our way back. Definitely, you know. If you were to transition from CNN to Bravo, okay, from your lips to God's ears, yeah. What show would you be on? Would I be on? Yeah. Well, why, why, why can't we have like, what? Do or mean? what show would you create? Let's create one together. So I love I a have. good creation part. Yeah. <laughs> We created. We we Bra- came up with a concept, mm-hmm. a dancing. Yeah, yeah it was it was it was, like it was ba- battle of bravos. Oh, bravo battle, and it was kind yeah. of like it was a spin, like lip sync battle, but like all bravo celebrities. Lip sync battle dancing. meets dancing with Can the I stars. Host it? Yes, 100%. yes. <laughs> well, I wanted to host it, but I'm okay. sure he'd let you guest host. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I'm better with a teleprompter. She's than 100. So- yeah, I'll be, the, I'll be that guy. That what's his name from Dance with the Stars? It does this guy. Carlton. I'll be him. Yes. I mean, I'm Carlton. I mean Alfonso, right, but yeah, he's doing the Carlton. So yeah. I have developed shows for Bravo. Oh. That I'm I'm not on talent uh-huh. um, from the production side. Yeah, and I like doing that. I develop shows for other networks too. I, I work on that, um, so I would like to do more of that. Yeah, and if I were to ever be on, it would be as a host or interviewer. I don't yeah. want to be a housewife. I, you know, I'm bore. I'm boring. Let's um, develop like a new sh- a new true. source for Bravo. Like let's let's love figure it. out what that looks I like. I love it. Tell your people. Okay. Tell your people. I'll have my people call your people. Wonderful. So I'll give you a text later on. <laughs> My, my person's over there. Yeah, <laughs> Your people is we will her. chat. <laughs> yes. Exactly. <laughs> Perfect. The Ashley Nicole wants to know what is the most difficult thing about being involved with politics? I take it personally, and this goes back to anxiety and mental health. Mm-hmm. 20 years of covering awful news mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. politics in this awful, weird time of politics where everyone hates each other has really taken a toll on my mental health. It's not the hardest. It's the thing that I am dealing with right now is doing my job and not 
being unhealthy Mm -hmm. while I do it. Right. Not taking every awful story home and and feeling like it's going to happen to my family. Oh my god. It's awful and it's um it's a prison. Yeah. That you live in when you have that kind of anxiety mm-hmm. all the time. Yeah. yeah. And I can't my therapist, you know, we talk she's like you can't just not watch the news. You can't just not go on social media. This is my job. Yeah. And I want to be able to do my job. But not at the point where it's hurting me. I mean, I literally do not watch the news for that reason. I see enough on social media. I hear enough from my mom. Good. I walked outside after I recorded here last night and I was like, oh my God, there's a fire. I didn't know anything about a fire. Yeah, right. But yesterday during lunch, there was nothing. It was The air was clear. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, the fire's in Canada. I'm like... I didn't know there was a fire in Canada right and now because I literally it's stay just, in your house. Oh my god, it's so bad. I know, uh, uh, but everything we do is at eleven. Yeah, right. All yeah. the news is at eleven, and that goes for politics too. The world's going to end, right? And mm-hmm. it's t- that is tough. And- it's always, yeah, right. It's Oof. always on edge. You always have to be that. You have to be on point. Yes. Wow. Well, you always the the point of news has become to make you afraid. Mm-hmm. I hate being involved Enter in that Enter 2020 COVID. I 100%. was terrified. I made everyone get tested before they saw Same. me. I was pregnant. I yeah. was, right. it was bad. Right, right. Well, and I hate that about my industry mm-hmm. and where especially cable news has gone Yeah, to make people afraid. And I've, I've said this, I said this to Dave at Bravo. When he walked me around BravoCon, the last one at, at the Javits Center, because I, I hosted some panels, walked me around and I see hundred thousands of fans Mm -hmm. so happy to be there to meet you all right to be with their favorite people and i thought i hate what i do these people are so happy this is what bravo does for these people yeah and all i do for people is make them angry and afraid oh and it really hurt me it made me sad and i called my agents and i was like i need to figure something new out yeah and obviously i'm still in politics that's fine but this cannot be my 24 mm-hmm. 7 i don't feel good about myself yeah and i feel like you, you know? also have a good perspective and you have a good th- way to present so i think there's definitely a way to work on that and build something that you enjoy doing because news shouldn't always be tearing down. It shouldn't always, right? Because I, enjoy, people should enjoy understanding what's going and on learning. in the world and learning. Yeah. But there's, but, but for us, when I turn my news on, it, I, I, I don't want to turn it on because I'm like, I'm not, I don't want to keep hearing this message. Terrifying. And I, I know what's going on. Know. Let's, yes. let's focus on like it. other things. I so hear you. But you know? clickbait, everything, it just kept, yeah, capture attention. And, and that's division. The, ultimate goal. the point is to identify your enemies and yeah. find friends. Correct. I hate that. Yeah. I hate it. I feel like a lot of my fears that I still have to this day could also come from watching the news so young growing up. And I've told my mom, when you're watching my daughter, news is not on your television oh, you. at all. All she does not need to see any of that. She is two. First of all, she doesn't even understand yes. it right now. But like as she gets older, I don't want her having the news on the television That's at so home good. because I remember growing up just watching every single first story. Someone was murdered. Some yes. it's always bad. If it bleeds, at least there's no positive local news. I mean, mm-hmm. maybe you have a little bit of the pride celebration or something, but it's always just so negative. Yes. And my mom, myself, and already my two year old daughter such empaths that when I hear about a mother losing her child, I'm just like, I can't. I was much happier not knowing about the little three-year-old who ate a button battery and died. I don't need to know that. I don't need to see it. It's just, I feel it so hard. And I'm like, these fears that I have, my OCD, just everything has just gotten so bad. And I'm like, I think a lot of this started with the news. You don't need it. (laughs) And I think that's really smart. Yeah. And to start early with your daughter too. Yeah. I, you know, I've had to cover mass shootings of children on the air Mm -mm. where I cry on the Mm -hmm. air because I can't contain my emotions. Yeah. How could you? These are some of the worst stories and they happen all the time. They're on repeat. Mm -hmm. I can't escape them. I know. Um, So it's awful. And I'm proud of you for setting those boundaries. Yeah. I wish I could. I'm not good with boundaries, but there's, there's a few that I'm like, okay, you know, I'm working on it. You know what boundaries are. Therapy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I feel like honey, this season, I think going back to the show, like you have done a really great job at standing up for yourself because you had, you stood up for them all season. You put it, and then as soon as it came down to like, yo, this is not okay. You didn't waver in your opinion. You set the boundaries. Said you guys are in fucking wrong. Sheena and- has been 
everyone's ride or die since Thank season you. one. Everyone's ride or die. And I think, Brock, you're exactly right. This season, of course, you were still there for everyone, but you put Sheena first. Too. Yeah. And it, it's such a difference. I told you this in LA. Like, you're such a star. You're such a Thank star. You. Finally. Finally. <sighs> because, I mean, you know, I hated the way people tried to kick you around. And yeah. Because they could girl. kick her around because... Because I'm so fucking you're nice. You're too nice. You're too you kind are, sometimes. But, uh, you've, you've really come into your own. Thank you're you. You're a mom. You're a mom. And yeah. that really comes through. Thank you. Love it. What do you think, in closing... Okay. What do you think... Vanderpump Rules season yeah. eleven looks like. What do we have for a, for a, for a fan of the show? For a, for you know, Bravo holic. Where would what what does the season look like for you in the world? Like, what do you want to see happen this summer? I mean, this is impossible, but I want all the same people to come back. Mm -hmm. I want to watch Rachel and Tom's journey, not together as a couple. Barf, but they're. <laughs> Right. Figuring this out. <laughs> like, I've always hated the cancel culture. Like someone fucks up and then let's send them off into the wilderness right. and pretend it never happened. Well, it did. And I'd like to actually learn about. Yeah. Learn. Case in point. What season, happened season after? Nine, you still want to see that. Yes. You want to see the fallout. Of course I do. I mean, the, part of the, it is schadenfreude and you want to see like, okay, I want to see these people who fucked up really yeah. go through it. But I also want to see them come out. Right. I want to see all of it. Yes. And I'm so in love with you guys. I want to see how this, how you work through it. So I really hope everyone comes back. I know what Ariana's saying and I know that will be difficult. Mm -hmm. I get it. But there's been so much growth and maturity and you guys are really, I think, in your prime. Yeah. Right now. How? 10 years later and now prime. it's like we're in our prime. You are. You are. <laughs> all of you. Prime. Yeah. I mean, Ariana and Katie with the, you know, something about her, like it's all happening. By all the way, mm -hmm. that I love how you just plugged that. Yeah. I just walked past something about her the other yes. day. Yes. It looks good. So good. Oh, good. It so looks bad. so cute. I'm so proud of them. I can't wait to go get some sandwiches. Yes, let's get yeah. sandwiches. Right? Pump <laughs> <Yes. laughs> yes. is closing. Something about her is opening. Perfect. There we go. Perfect symmetry. Well, we unfortunately got to run. We've got an event to get yeah, to. But yeah, I'm excited do. to continue our night in New York together. Please tell everyone where they can find you. Uh, now, CNN still. <laughs> we'll see for how long. But CNN and uh, SC Cup on Twitter, SC Cup on Instagram. Yes. Thank you so much for being here. I'm Pleasure. glad that despite the fires and the traffic and the train and my OCD and anxiety, we were able to make this happen. We did it. Team effort, baby. I love you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening. Bye. For this all my life, you're just my type. I've been looking for a boy who can treat me right. Your dark hair, but those eyes so bright. They look into my soul and it sparks my life. Can I take you there?